Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and in this video, we're going to be diving into making your own custom braided cables for your camera rigs and other things. So at Camera Foundry, I've been building and making and designing a bunch of different uh, camera equipment or rigs. This is one of them, Cineback. We also have Cineback Lite, which is available now on the store and we're all very excited about. And a byproduct of all of this has been cables. Tons and tons of wires and cables that are a byproduct of designing and working with this stuff. So we have more DTAP cables than we're ever going to be able to use. So rather than recycle them, I figured I'd do a video on making custom cables for your camera rigs and sell these things for next to nothing at cameraFoundry.com. So we're gonna be making a bunch of different custom cables in this video, but first I wanna let you know, no one is sponsoring this video. That said, this video is supported by those of you who pick up camera gear from cameraFoundry.com that I've put together or our camera guides and LUTs, as well as the Caleb Pike 212 battery by Small Rig. All of that will be linked down in the description. Thank you guys so much for the support. And let's get on to making a bunch of different cables. So we're gonna head over to the bench and dive right in. To build your own custom cable, there's a couple of things you'll need. Obviously a cable or cables if you buy one of our dirt cheap DTAP to bare wire cables at camerafoundry.com. The next thing you'll need is some kind of cable sleeving. So far I've had great results with the Flexo PET line and there are several different sizes, different colors. I found eighth inch to work with most cables, but if you're going to change the color of existing cables like XLR or HDMI cables, you might wanna go with something a little larger. Here's some colors I purchased, including this nice brown that kind of looks copper over black, silver, and an olive drab as well as forest green. And of course, red always looks fantastic. And last but not least, you can always go with black, which looks a little boring, but still gives you some nice texture with that meshing. Next, we need Shrink Wrap or Shrink Flex, which is the brand that I've gone with. The two specs you need to pay attention to is the size and then the shrink ratio. So here you see I have three eighths for our size and the shrink ratio is three to one, meaning when you heat it up, it'll shrink down to one third the size of the original. I found three eighths to be the most useful size for the cables I was making. But again, if you're not making your cables from scratch, like adding a sleeve to an HDMI cable, you might wanna go with something larger here. You also need a couple of tools, including some way to heat up the heat shrink, whether that be a heat gun like this one or a lighter also works great. You'll need a pair of scissors if you're gonna make your own connectors, some kind of wire stripper or cutter, a soldering iron, and a multimeter with a continuity mode is really really handy for making your own cables from scratch. Finally, we'll need some connectors if you're going to, again, make your own cables instead of just sleeving old cables. Here I have a basic barrel connector that works with almost all DC connection devices, but you can also go a little more exotic with connectors like this right angle Limo connector if that's what you need. So now let's go ahead and finally make a cable. I'm going to take one of our Camera Foundry D-Tab cables, cut it to length. These ship at around 32 inches. Then we're going to take one of our sleeves and you'll see here when you you push on the end, it creates kind of a pocket or expansion spot, and that allows you to get the sleeve over the end of the cable. Then you simply caterpillar feed it all the way along the cable. We're ready to go ahead and build this thing. I'm gonna cut off the excess. I would recommend giving yourself a little more than I did here. Then on the D-tap end, I'm going to clean up using a pair of scissors, then cut some shrink tubing and run it over the end of the cable and clean up that D-tap end. So as you can see, once I heat it up, we get a really nice clean D-tap connector on one end. Now we can work on the DC barrel on the other. So I'm gonna use this for monitors or lights. So I took the outer sleeving off and we're gonna run that over the cable. Now, the best way to do this is not what you see here where you're struggling to get it over that sleeving. What I would recommend is leaving extra sleeving and then putting the connector over that sleeving. As you see here with this brown cable I made later, it's so much easier. So definitely leave yourself some extra sleeving to be able to do this. From there, we can peel the two wires apart from each other. And here you'll notice that one is smooth and one has lines on it. Almost all of the time, the kind of texture textured or cable with lines on it is going to be your negative, but definitely check this for yourself using a multimeter. I'm gonna cut that one shorter than the other since we're going to be soldering these at different lengths and I'll strip back the sleeving on the wire. Then I'm going to tin the end with a little bit of solder on both wires as well as both points where we solder onto the connector and I'll solder the wire to the connector itself with the negative being at the back of this particular connector, but you should check that for yourself and the positive 
keeping that small tab near the front. Make sure the wires aren't touching and then we can go ahead and pull the sleeve up and over and lock it in place by twisting it as you see here. If you messed up your cable like you see on this silver cable, you can trim back the excess sleeving, slide over some heat shrink, heat it up, and it won't be perfect, but hey, that's not too bad. Alternatively, if you put on your connector like I showed you earlier, this is a lot easier, a lot cleaner, and the end result is a nice clean connector. Now let's get into some trickier cables, including this Indy Pro power adapter. So this drops the voltage down to 12 volts. I'm going to cut off the connector and put on our own using the multimeter set to continuity mode and pressing this button to make it beep when both ends are touching or connected. I can figure out which one of these wires is negative or positive so that I can wire it up correctly. This one I'm going with four screen and this process at this point is the same going forward. This Time I wanted to get extra fancy, so I took apart the D-tab connector on the end, marked the positive connector, so when I put it back together, I wouldn't cross those two connections, ran sleeving over that end as well, and here's the end result with everything put back together. A nice, clean, meshed cable. One of the easiest ways to mod your cables without any soldering. So here I have a 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter cable. I'm gonna take our cable sleeving and simply put it over the end, and then using that caterpillar method where you expand it by pressing it or compressing it, I'm going to run the sleeving over the entire cable. Once it is all the way over the cable, we can trim the ends and add our heat shrink, heat it up, and just like that, we have a super custom looking cable with just a little bit of heat shrink and some cable sleeving. I think these look super sharp and it really dresses up a rig. You can also do this with really oddball cables like USB-C cables as well as HDMI cables. You just need to make sure you have a large enough diameter cable sleeving that can get over those bulky connectors. So here we have kind of the worst case scenario, a giant HDMI connector, and we're going to use the sleeving to dress the ends. We could use either tape or go with some larger diameter heat shrink. Here's one of the camera foundry right angle to right angle cables for either data or power delivery. And the same thing goes. I can get a larger diameter sleeve and shrink wrap over those larger connectors and come up with a really nice looking cable. So that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you want to buy an insane amount of DTAP cables, definitely head over to camerafoundry.com and use the link in the description to go ahead and pick up packs of these things and start making your own cables for very little money. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.